Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Wilhelm Scream, and welcome back to another day in Destiny 2 for some more Destiny 2 news and Beyond Light Season of the Lost Intel. And in this video, we're sort of going to be doing something that dovetailed with a previous video that I did about farming spoils of conquest. In that video, I showed you how on all three characters you could go and solo the Kali encounter in the Last Wish raid to get three spoils of conquest as well as some raid loot on all three characters. You could do this once per week per character. You get three spoils of conquest on each completion, so a total of nine. Well, we're going to up the ante on this one. We're not going to be doing the Kali encounter. Instead, we're going to be going into the Vault of Glass, and we're going to be soloing three of the raid chests for a total of 45 spoils of conquest as well as raid loot. You can do this, as I said, as a solo player on all three characters once per week on all three. So that's three chests. You can do the math. I've seen a lot of people ask if this is patched. It has not been patched. I can't see it being patched in the foreseeable future. So we'll just go through it and I'll give you some details that maybe I've missed in the past when I've talked about this particular glitch. It's fairly easy to do. The first one we're going to be doing it on is the Hunter class. Now, as you saw in the beginning, I actually went and rallied a raid banner. That was simply so that I had more sword ammo, as having a sword is going to be essential. If you're on the hunter, I would definitely bring stompies to get that extra little bit of height on the jump, and I would also have triple jump. You'll use your sparrow to glitch through the map by following the path I showed you. Simply load into the raid move over to the right and find that one particular rock. Wedge the sparrow up next to the rock and then dart left and dismount the sparrow on the left. This will let you drop through the map. One little tip that I think I've missed when talking about this in the past is making sure that you have your sword out and equipped before you actually get on the sparrow. That's because when you drop through the map You'll need your sword actually equipped to be able to use it instantly because you're going to have to act fairly quick to make sure that you make that first jump. If you don't have it equipped, you're going to have to swap to it and that'll take at least a second. You won't be able to make the jump. So make sure you have it equipped when you get on the sparrow before you actually glitch through the map. Once you glitch through, make it onto that first rock and then jump to that little ledge and then to the second ledge. I would suggest just dropping off the ledges before you actually jump as you get a little bit of distance just by dropping off of any particular ledge on the hunter. The path that we take through that particular ledge sort of jumping puzzle will do for the hunter class and for the titan class, but we're actually going to do something a little bit different for the warlock. Once you make it through those ledges, you're going to have to jump up and over onto those two top ledges. And then make your way across that big gulch so that you can get to this particular area. You'll know it by these sort of lit up rocks. And you'll hit this load zone. Once you hit the load zone, simply drop off the map. Try not to land too long on any particular piece of actual solid ground. As if you stand on solid ground for too long, it'll actually create a spawn point. That can be beneficial earlier on when you're standing on the ledges so that when you fall off, you actually spawn inside the glitch section rather than back outside where your sparrow was. But for actually getting through the um, load zone, you just want to make sure that you drop off the map almost instantly after you hit the load zone. You can then make your way to the first secret chest as normal, as now you will be inside of the map. The secret chests, as I said, drop five spoils of conquest, as well as any raid loot that you've already acquired by doing the raid normally.
If you are a solo player and you've never done anything in the raid, but you're just looking to farm out some exotics from the tower kiosk, I can understand how doing a raid solo for the first time in a random pickup group if you don't have friends can be sort of a daunting task. And there's a lot of anxiety around that, which I can also understand. So for a lot of people, this might be the only option. Now for the Warlock, before you actually get on the Sparrow to glitch through the map, I would activate Heat Rising. This will allow you to scoot across the top of the map fairly easily. If you don't have Heat Rising with the way that the Warlock jump kind of works, even though you get a lot of distance, you really don't get any height. So you'll end up just sort of dropping off. Instead of going to the right like we did on the Hunter, we're instead going to go to the left and make our way around sort of these two rock pillars. Once you're on the second one, you can actually jump up and around to make it to that one sort of gray rock cliff. But there is an invisible barrier above you, so there is a chance you might actually hit it and get bounced off like you saw me do there. But if you have established a spawn point by simply standing on solid ground for long enough, you will still spawn outside of the map like you see me doing. I would suggest instead of going around, just go up and over and through this little gap so that you can make it onto this one gray rock cliff. Once you're here, if you have a super, you can actually make your jump directly to the load zone that I did previously. But I would suggest just activate heat rising again and make it to the same cliff that we did before. Jump up and back the same way we did and slot into this one little uh, sort of rock section here. You can just stand on it, use a sword to sort of dart in if you need to. And then it's fairly easy on a warlock, just jump up, move up around onto this sort of big gray rock slab here. And then again, we're gonna make our jump across this big gulch. Keep in mind, there is an invisible wall in front of you, so you can't go directly across. You have to sort of aim towards the rock cliffs on the left and move your way around. You'll notice that sometimes I actually run into it and I have to just either use the warlock dart or uh, a sword swing to simply make my way around the edge. But if you make your way to this sort of cliff, you shouldn't have too much of an issue. Once again, make your way across these sort of lit up rocks, hit the load zone and then drop off the ledge once again. Now, if you happen to land on solid ground for too long, once you're in this area, you usually can just blow yourself up with a rocket or a grenade launcher, and you'll still be able to spawn inside the map. Make your way to the secret chest once again, collect the loot and the five spoils of conquest. Warlocks do have a slight advantage when doing all of these sort of out of map jumping puzzles simply because they do have the Icarus Dash as well as the Heat Rising. And if you're willing to go to your super, you can clear really great distances. It's probably the most controlled uh, aerial super uh, in the game. So if you don't play on too many other characters or maybe you only play on one character, I actually play a lot more on my Warlock than I do on the other classes. I kind of just keep them around mostly just to do this kind of stuff. Um, I would suggest maybe starting a Warlock just because it can make these things easier, especially for the first time you're doing them. Now for the Titan, once again, I would use a sword and Lion Rampant Boots. They'll make it fairly easy for that first section where you just drop down as you do get a bit of height once you activate the boost. We will do a little bit of sword flying. If you don't know how to sword fly, it's fairly simple and I'll just sort of walk you through the process as we do it. But then again, sort of jump off, sort of glide down a little bit, let yourself fall before you actually activate the boost of the boots. But you should be able to clear most of these in one simple jump. As you can see, I fall here, but because I was able to establish that spawn point on the previous ledge, I don't actually have to backtrack too far. If you see me pausing at any particular point, that is exactly what I'm doing. I'm establishing the spawn point simply by standing on a place, usually for only about five to 10 seconds, and it will establish the spawn point. This allows you to sort of progress without having to worry of 
repeating stuff that you've already done too many times and it keeps it from getting too frustrating. Once you're here, again, we're gonna jump back and up and try to scoot into that one little crack. It's a very small ledge, but it is a sort of essential ledge. You can try to make the jump all the way up to the top, but I find that unless I'm using a Warlock with Heat Rising, I can maybe make it. Most of the time, I'm gonna fall just short, but it's okay because you can just scoot into that crack just enough. Using a sword, it's fairly easy. Just make sure that you sword swing in as you get close. It's the same path from there on out. Like I said, we are going to do a little bit of sword flying here, which is a simple process of with the Lion Rampant Boots, you're going to activate the jump, boost up into the air, and then turn it off while you're in the air. Once you turn off the boost, that's when you do a sword swing. That'll allow you to get the boost back instantly so you can sort of just continue this process of jumping in the air, activating the boost, turning off the boost before you actually do the sword swing. We're gonna traverse this big jump once more, again, aiming more towards the left side, activating the boost, doing the sword swing, activating the boost, doing the sword swing. Once you're here, you don't really need to do that too much anymore. You can also use certain supers to make your way across then. Hit the load zone, and drop through the map once again. You'll spawn inside and you can make your way to that secret chest once more. Now for the last part of this video, uh, this particular glitch is actually not my own. And a big shout out once again to Marie Time Lost for allowing me to use the footage that we're gonna be showing. This part is a little bit trickier and it takes a slight bit of skill, at least some practice, because we're going to be using a sparrow flying technique. The reason we're going to be using a sparrow flying technique is though you can actually get to the place that we're going without a sparrow, you're going to need one once again to glitch through the map, almost using the exact same technique that we did uh, to glitch through in the first part of this video. Once again, get yourself some extra loot. Now to get your Sparrow once you've glitched into the map, you're gonna need to go back to the beginning of the actual room that we would normally go through, that is the big door. Activate your Sparrow there and then fly it down into where you would normally face the Templar. You'll use that one little rock to jump and use the sparrow fly that you just saw and then maneuver down into this crack behind that wall. We're sort of up to the left of where the Templar would actually spawn. Once you have your sparrow down here, you're then going to use it once again to sort of wedge against this wall, which is sort of slanted, and glitch down beneath the map again. Once you're down here, you'll follow the path that is shown. Jump up over this rock until you hit this load zone. You'll then respawn inside of the map. And that will take you to one of two places. You can either go to the chest right before we enter where we would fight the Gate Lord and of course the final encounter for Atheon. Or you can go back using the same technique and the same checkpoint and go and get the Gorgon Maze secret chest. Now for that of course you're gonna need to activate the door to be able to get into that secret chest, but it's fairly simple and there's a lot of tutorials online on how to do that. This can be done on all three characters. As you can see the first part of this was done on a warlock. This part is being done on a hunter. 
Most of it just revolves around hitting different checkpoints and then being able to spawn inside the map. This was a slightly different checkpoint, though you probably could just backtrack. If you find that backtracking may be a little bit too difficult, you can just repeat the same process, get that same checkpoint. And instead of going to the third chest, or excuse me, the fourth chest, right before the Gate Lord room, you would simply make it to this one. This is probably easiest done on a hunter, as you can always have invisibility as a backup to make sure you don't get any of the Gorgons spotting you. So with that, and of course, the Kali encounter, which is another nine secret chests, that's a total of 54 secret chests every single week. And that's gonna be it for all the information in today's video. Hopefully you found something helpful. I know a few of these things can be a little bit difficult. The first three really aren't, as well as doing the Kali encounter. So if you only do those two things every week, I know it might take a little bit of time to actually uh, occur all the um, spoils of conquest that you might need to buy some of those tower exotics, then there really are some great tower exotics. Sleeper Simulant is in there. Maybe you're still looking um, for some of the older exotics. But at the very least, you can get 15 from this plus 9 from the Kali encounter. So you can slowly make your way up. And I know uh, this is primarily for solo players, maybe for people who just don't have time to raid on any given week and they just want to get a few extra spoils. But uh, I do like to talk specifically to solo players as there's very few options for getting some of those tower uh, kiosk exotics if you're not raiding constantly or if just the whole idea of the uh, group uh, or finding a group to do a raid is just a little too much stress. And I can completely understand that um, that viewpoint or just that experience. Nobody likes to be the only person in a raid or in a group that doesn't know exactly what's going on. And if you don't find a positive enough group to really be able to take the time and explain to you how a mechanic works, it, it can be stressful. So hopefully this will allow you over time to get some of those uh, tower kiosk exotics. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you enjoyed this content. Um, that'll also enter you into any future giveaways on the YouTube channel. The next one will be at 55,000 subscribers. We're doing a Witch Queen uh, year pass giveaway. Hopefully we kind of get to 55,000 around the time that that's actually released. So nobody actually misses out on any of the new content. And after that giveaway, we're actually going to be doing a much bigger one. So even if you don't win any particular one, if you do any of those things, of course, you'll be entered into all future ones. You can also follow me on Instagram or Twitter. That'll give you another entry into any of those future giveaways. And if you leave a hashtag Beyond Light or a hashtag Season of the Lost, or since it is uh, that time of year, if you leave a hashtag Festival of the Lost in the comment section down below, we'll give you an extra entry into that giveaway for this video. I do a secret hashtag on all videos if you are new to the channel, so if you would like to go back and check out any of the previous content, leave another hashtag that'll give you another entry, those stack between all videos. As always, I am Wilhelm Scream. Once again, thanks so much for watching, and of course, we will see you next time. Little.